creating sheets is actually something I tend to do at the beginning of the project. In an in, in the industry or in an office, what you'd find is that when a project comes into the office, you'd sit down and work out what's, what the scope of works is, how much work are you doing, and therefore what drawings you need to produce for it. And at that point, you would tend to write out what you need. Um, so what we're doing now is just starting it off. But what I wanted to tell you that for is that when you do that, you need to make sure that you follow it in a certain order. So for example, zero, zero was always the cover sheet. And then you start with the biggest plan of all, which may be the site plan, or it may just be straight into the floor plan in the case of this project. Then you move on to elevations, sections, and details. So I'm right clicking on sheets all, I'm down in my project browser, and I'm selecting new sheet. And you can see that I've already got some loaded into this project. If you don't, there is some sitting in S Drive and there is also some available for you on Connect. So A3 title block and OK. All right, now what we've got is a pre-made A3 drawing sheet. If I was to measure this, you would see that it is 420 wide, the exact width when it prints. So this is currently at 1 to 1. And what we're going to do is come down here and you can see that it's created this one. Now this drawing sheet has been created with labels. Creating your own labels is easy enough to do. We may try and get up to that later. Within Revit, it understands what things change on every sheet and what stay the same. So the things that stay the same are the client name and the project name and the project number. The things that change might be or will be the drawing name, the drawing number, who it was drawn by, and who it was checked by, because different people in an office will work on different parts of the project. The date that you see here is the date that that sheet got st was started to be drawn. So there'll be three dates that it appear. One is the project issue date, so the date that the project started, and this one is the sheet issue date. And the final one is an amendment date, which is the date that that drawing left the office. So up in Manage and Project Settings, uh, here somewhere, the last one that I select, Project Parameters, there we go. No, sorry, Project Information. I'm going to input, because for some of this information it's the only place I can, the project number the project name. In this case, it is a proposed renovation. And the client name can be assessment number one, but you would make sure that you found the client's name out, spelt it correctly, and understood exactly who the client or clients were. Um, now I need to click on the project address over here to plug all of that in. I've just plugged in a random address. But you would not do that, of course, if you were in industry. You would make sure you got that perfect. All of this needs to be perfect. The client is the person who pays your bills. Now, whether I do this over here or here doesn't actually matter. So if I was to rename this and I would start with A00, and I'm calling it cover sheet. You can see that it changes over there, except we've got a little bit of an issue with our drawing. I'm going to need to correct that. Drawn by is your name, and I want you to put your full name in there. And the checker, of course, is your teacher. And this will need to be done, this bit will need to be done for every sheet. Now I'm just going to quickly correct what the problem is here. If I double click or click on this and go edit family, I'm going to zoom in. You can see that there hasn't been much space allowed for all of that. So I'm just going to click and drag out my label box, which looks a lot like a text box, except it's cleverer. That'll do me. All right. Um, you should try and save this to your H drive so that you can use it again. And I'm just going to load it back into project. I think it's that one. And it's going to ask me a question. Now this is important. Override the existing version and its parameter values. So what it's saying is there's already one in here. 
there's a new one coming in. Do you want to use the new stuff on the new one? That's what it's saying. And we're saying that'd be terrific. There we go. All right, now we've got all the hard stuff done. The next couple of sheets are going to be super easy. Because we've renamed this A for Architectural 00, if I do another sheet, you can see that it goes, oh, well, the next one must be A01. I'm going to rename that to floor plan. And I'll do one more for the moment. And I shall I'll just do it over here to show you your options. Kitchen layout. Perhaps we do the floor plans first and then any elevations that need to go with it. So you're going to change that. Now the other way of adding a view is simply to come up to the view itself under views and I've already created a camera view the perspective of the kitchen that I want to put on the cover sheet so I can physically just click drag and drop it onto the sheet uh, for the perspective I think it's fairly evident what it is so I'm actually just going to get rid of so no title when I do perspectives, I normally remove the title unless it needs explaining. Everything else does need a view title. I'm going to click on this and size crop it. And if I scale log proportions, let's see, 420 wide. Um, let's see what happens if I make it sort of 350 wide. I want it to take up a fair bit of space on my thing. That's a bit much, isn't it? 310. Okay, so when my client looks at this, we're going to add some information later, so I might allow that room now. We're going to add a drawing schedule, so when we look at this, we know exactly how many drawings are in it. But other than that, we've got a cover sheet ready to dazzle our client, and we've got our kitchen layout ready to get approval from our client, and so the last thing we need to do is printed.